Joining me is Australia's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan of the Australian newspaper. Greg, great to see you. Um, it's a year now since Hamas started this war by slaughtering 1,200 Jews, taking 251 hostages, including a baby and a toddler who still are missing. Israel has since hit back at Hamas in Gaza, the Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon, at Iran itself. Even yesterday, the defence minister still sticking to the script. Israel has a right to defend itself, but we can't we can't actually say yes to anything Israel actually does. Here she is. Iran has been attacking Israel. Israel has a right to defend itself in the face of all of that. The manner in which it defends itself clearly matters. Lebanon. Should Israel be attacking Hezbollah targets in Lebanon or not? Well, we, we, we've made clear that Israel has a right to defend itself. No one wants to see this escalate into a broader conflict. God, I'm sick and tired of that, that weaseling. How's the government handled this, Greg Sheridan? Well, Andrew, uh, uh, like you, I'm really, in fact, I'm quite ashamed of the government, to tell you the truth. Um, it's a left-wing government trying to govern from the centre, but it doesn't know how, doesn't have the values, doesn't have the mindset, its officers aren't staffed that way. Um, and it's also, its response has been characterised by cowardice all over the place. I mean, it's a bit scared of the reaction it's whipped up now from normal Australians. So in the last day or two, it's made some slightly more pro-Israel statements, but it just... Um, it goes in the direction of whichever way the wind is blowing. And Richard Miles, I think, has become a tragic figure. I mean, he markets himself as a defence hawk and a lifelong friend of Israel. But I tell you what, you wouldn't want to... You know, if the only thing standing between you and disaster was Richard Miles' courage and fidelity to friendship, you'd be in a bad way. Uh, this is a government which has not exhibited any values or any clear policy. I would have more respect for it if it were like the government of Spain or Ireland and were just blatantly anti-Israel. I'd hate that, but I'd respect its position. Unlike Peter Dutton and unlike the Greens, you know what they, what they believe in. You have no idea what this government believes in, except that it's mealy-mouthed and it uh, is scared to be seen to be too friendly to Israel. As you said, even from the day after the atrocities, it was scared to stand too close to the victims. Well, Greg, I, I've been struggling to understand understand this, given what Israel faces, what we've seen uh, on October 7. It has been very eager to please Muslim communities. That's absolutely number one, especially voters in Western Sydney that, that is relying on... Uh, that they don't want them to go to the Greens. Today, the radical head of the Australian-Palestinian Advocacy Network, uh, the guy who's been behind a lot of the Melbourne protests, ugly protests, gave, gave Albanese this praise. Anthony Albanese absolutely is the best friend Palestine's ever had in the Lodge. Absolutely. It's a very low bar. Well, praise from Nasher Mashni is no praise at all. Uh, has, has Albanese actually you know, tilted too far to the Muslim lobby? Well, of course he has, but I, I wouldn't even just entirely blame the Muslims. They're, they're a big factor, there's no doubt. There's 100,000 Jews in Australia, there's nearly a million Muslims. So the government is just completely sold out uh, to electoral interests. But it's not only the Muslim vote, it's the Green Left vote. I mean, our universities have been inculcating a hatred of the West and a hatred of the United States and a hatred of Israel for 30 or 40 or 50 years now. And... It's Greens voters. I mean, Anthony Albanese is never going to lose his seat to a Liberal, but he could lose it to a Green. And it's it's the, um, you know, non-Muslim, Caucasian, uh, middle-class lefty vote that Labor is pandering to as much as it is to the Muslims. But I don't know that this government actually has any idea what it's doing. I mean, you just have no idea. It's not as if this government has a secret real position, which it's too scared to put. Its position seems to be just whatever the focus group and the PR line and how it's going to balance off the Greens against the uh, the mainstream of Australia. And you see it with Richard Miles. I think Miles has become, as I say, a tragic and pathetic figure. Right. He gets trapped into a little formula. You know, Israel has a right to defend itself, but we, we want de-escalation. And he can't answer a straight question. <laughs> you ask him one question beyond 
the talking point and he has no idea what to say. He just has his little phrase worked out and that's the uh, limit look, of the government's position. I don't think I've ever seen a government as incompetent as this at answering straightforward questions. Well, some of these guys, and I include Mark Dreyfus, who's Jewish himself, should realise one day they'll look back and realise they had a chance to make a moral stand and they didn't take it. And I think that should be a cause of you know, a cause of shame for the rest of their lives if they don't do something now. We're going to have much more on this later in the show, uh, Greg. I just want to end here with something extraordinary. New Zealand's Navy has just nine ships. I didn't realise. Only six that actually have crews. But as of yesterday, it now has just five uh, ships left with crews after a survey vessel hit a reef in Samoa, <laughs> of all things, caught fire and sank. Yet the Defence Minister treated this disaster as an extraordinary feat of seamanship. Here she is. This was in the dark, heavy, heavy seas. This was an extraordinary feat of keeping people together and keeping them safe. This was, this is, uh, having spoken to the captain, this was a tremendous effort um, from everybody and everyone stayed calm. Greg, is New Zealand a total woke joke, a symbol of why tyrannies are on the rise while the West is so weak? Well, it is, it is pathetic. I, I mean, the only thing in the world that makes the Australian Navy look any good is the New Zealand Navy. And this is now years and years, decades and decades of neglect of New Zealand defence. You know, once it was called the Prussia of the South Seas, it, you know, the, the New Zealanders <laughs> used to think they were the better soldiers in the Anzac Corps than the Aussies, and there was half a case to make for that. But they've had, ever since that uh, buffoon David Longy took them out of the ANZUS alliance, they have run down their defence forces. Mind you, we're heading in the same why we haven't yet been sunk by a shoal, heaven forfend what we do against the Chinese if you can't manage to defend yourself against a, a, a passive shoal. But um, you remember we sent a ship out a year or two ago and it broke down along the way, had to get the NRMA, the RACV, to come and give it roadside assistance. Well, <laughs> the New Zealanders managed to sink themselves in Samoa with no hostile vessels. Now, the Luxon government is infinitely better than the government it replaced, the Ardern government. But it's starting from so far behind and it has so little fiscal headroom and New Zealanders can't take defence seriously. They can't take the Chinese challenge seriously. They are passengers in uh, history. They are that, not uh, agents you're being of too history. Cruel here. They have taken the diversity test seriously because that was a female captain. Not, not that I say anything. I'm just saying uh, the diversity quota has been met. Uh, honestly, Greg, Greg uh, Sheridan, thank you so much for your time on this terrible day.